Welcome back Guardians. Today we're going to talk about the Oubliette Savathun Spire and the experiments Savathun conducted there. As this season progresses, we continue to tithe to Eris Morn and we uncover more secrets and information about the experiments Savathun performed on her captured subjects. I believe Eris Morn hopes to discover a strategy that can be used to defeat Zivu Arath. Even though she has her hive form, it has been hinted at that this is unlikely to be enough. And that is why we're going to talk about all the new lore this season that details the experiments that Savathun conducted, including the forced creation of Lucent Hive. And of course, we'll see how all this leads back to the Imbaru engine revealed in week 5. It's all linked together. So to start off, let's listen to Imbaru not Imbaru, and Savathun from week one talk about the primary purpose for the Oubliette and how it was to test the light. Have a listen. After I resurrected Savathun, she was dying to learn about her new light, but she needed test subjects to experiment on. Same way you use the poor slobs and gambit for target practice. Listen to this. I named this chamber the Oubliette, after a human invention, a prison where the only exit is the ceiling, just out of reach. A place for people to be thrown in and forgotten, until the time is right. This is where I'll keep in touch with all my bygone subjects, both as a queen and researcher. So it would appear that Savathun made the Oubliette to test and experiment with the light. In the Pharmacos ghost shell, it would seem that Savathun trapped, threatened, and coerced ghosts to turn Hive into Guardians. Now, previous lore made the resurrection of the Lucent Hive seem much more voluntary, and we are assuming there were some like Finch who originally voluntarily resurrected the Hive, but this entry also implies that some ghosts were coerced by Savathun to resurrect the Hive. My interpretation of this entry is that Savathun trapped a bunch of ghosts, threatened them to the point where one was willing to partner with the Hive. Maybe this is how Bungie justifies how many Lucent Hive there are in the game? See what you think. The Pharmacos ghost shell reads, A little flock of unpaired ghosts shivered and murmured together in their luminous cage. Their chitinous shells clacked together as they huddled. When their queen opened their cage, the ghosts shied back. Come now, Savathun said, cloying, vicious. The light belongs to all of us, and aren't you curious? They didn't move, only stared at her and the litter of ghost shells behind her. She changed tack. The others wanted the traveler to be safe. Don't you want that too? They did. That's all they wanted. One ghost shifted forward. The others tried to close ranks and keep it with them. It pushed forward. The needle-fingered one reached out, and the ghost floated willingly into her claws. You could see why this would be a valuable experiment for Savathun, because our understanding of the Guardian revival process is largely unknown, and often considered by humanity as fate, as destiny, as being chosen by the Traveler. I think the intention of this lore entry is to show that Savathun was testing the idea, can you force a ghost to create a Guardian against its will? Like I said before, other Hive ghosts willingly did partner with the Hive. Finch and Imaru are both examples. Finch witnessed Savathun's throne world be consumed by the light. It was changed when she was first revived. And then Finch interpreted this as the will of the Traveler. Have a listen to the Finch 1 lore tab. It reads, And I thought, maybe they're right. I mean, I could see the light scouring a whole world right in front of me. Maybe this was some kind of turning point for the Hive. Knowing your creator chose you to remake an entire species. Oh, you'd make bad choices too. So I shared my light, who wouldn't? A couple hundred of your closest friends bearing down on you and a Hive Shredder waiting if you say no. I shared, I reached into him, touched something deep. Finch's story differs heavily from the one about the ghost trapped in the cage. Finch and his friends found the throne world on their own, witnessed the light, cleansed the place, and made their choice. The ghosts in the cage, they were taken from somewhere, trapped, and essentially forced to do whatever Savathun asked. 
While the story of Finch and these cage ghosts are complete opposites, they share the same message. Ghosts can make mistakes. Ghosts can be convinced by external factors to revive a guardian. Finch was convinced by the changing environment and the thrown world. The cage ghosts were convinced by Savathun. If Savathun was testing whether it was possible to influence a ghost to revive a guardian, what purpose would that serve? I mean, Finch just stopped reviving his guardian after he regretted the decision. Couldn't these ghosts also refuse to revive their new guardians? Well, Savathun only needed them to revive the hive once, to transfer some of that light energy into the hive so she could convert it. Convert it into what? You already know the answer. Have a listen to the Sparagmus ship lore. It reads, The Ark Crystal hung in the air, crackling and spitting with energy. Savathun inspected it. No fractures, no unstable charges pouring from unseen fissures. When she ran a claw down its surface, she could feel static bolts down her arm. Savathun turned to her assembled brood. You, she said, and a loosened hive knight advanced to kneel before his queen. Suddenly, his fellow hive descended upon him, tearing at his chitin, pulling apart his flesh. When Savathun reached out and crushed his ghost, a burst of crystalline light erupted from its remains, the energy arranging itself into a triclinic lattice. This crystal pulsed with void light, and you, an acolyte whose eyes gleamed with vital, endless fire, stepped forward and bowed. To me, this seems like Savathun forced the creation of a Hive Guardian only to destroy them in order to create the elemental crystals, essentially storing the light, stockpiling it. Super interesting because we know that Eris has taken an interest in these crystals. We know that previously Savathun made void crystals from Guardians from the Savathun Song Strike mission, and now she has replicated that with the Lucent Hive. We also know that she is not just making void crystals, but also arc and solar crystals. I'm not too sure how Eris will use this information, but super interesting to understand how much light Savathun has stored from these experiments. But studying the light isn't the only thing that Savathun experimented with. Imaru tells us that she has also studied how the Scorn are revived and mentions the frequency of the Scorn and how it hasn't decreased at all, despite us and the Lucent Hive taking them out. Have a listen. Savathun kept these undead dolts in here under lock and key, studied them for a while. She wanted to see if there were anything like Nocris's necromancy. They weren't. They got a special kind of resurrection just for them. No ghosts, no throne worlds, just Dark Ether and the Witness. And lucky for us, they just keep coming. Scorn is still all over the throne world. No matter how many you kill, they keep coming back. Witness must be churning them out. The reason why I bring up the Scorn is it showcases that Savathun was not only studying the light, but also studied the darkness through the Scorn. Her study was not just limited to the Scorn, but also included other powerful creatures. In the third week of the season, Imaru tells us this. Have a listen. Savathun's been hoarding powerful creatures and those summoning pits for a long time. Partially to study, but also to keep them out of the hands of her sister. If Sivu is able to take that extra power for herself, forget it, we're all dead. It is interesting that Imaru says that Savathun has been hoarding these creatures for a long time, because the time between Savathun separated from her worm and when we killed her at the end of Witch Queen is only about a week long. This leads us to believe that the Oubliette has existed before Savathun's resurrection by Imaru. This theory is reinforced when we hear Imaru admit that he hasn't seen all of the Oubliette. Remote scans indicate that the Oubliette is larger than we thought. There must be more undiscovered chambers. Of course. This is Savathun we're talking about. Even I haven't seen everything in here. Don't worry, you'll get where you need to go. After the boss makes you work for it. Now, it could technically be possible that Savathun constructed the Oubliette after being resurrected, and within a week's time, filled it with a ton of enemies, performed experiments, and kept some of it secret from Imaru. 
but I believe that Oubliette predated the Hive's acquisition of the light, and so these experiments have been happening for some time. The experiments with the light, of course, are newish, even though they likely continue her void crystal strategy from Savathun's soul. So far, we've talked about experiments with the light, experiments with the dark, but that is not all. Savathun also created the Spire to contribute to her tribute system, as she can feed her worm through cunning and trickery. And having a Spire of experiments, which we don't understand, actually would help feed Savathun's worm, if she still had one. Have a listen to the Eliadic Principal Machine Gun lore entry. It reads, Savathun didn't construct her Spire for light and logic alone. There is more to this than meets the eye. That's the crux of it. What is Imbaru? Asking the question yields an ounce of tribute by itself. Failing to answer it yields more. It's impossible to engage with the concept without falling into the web of cunning devised by the Witch Queen, even after her death. It's elegant and irritating. We are familiar with the sword logic, the need to endure and force the universe to endure you. It's a contest. When there is nothing left standing but you, then you've won. Your prize is existence. But Imbaru is tribute from the failure to understand. When Savathun ensnared us with her cunning, she fed her worm. Every false step or mistake in our attempts to unravel Savathun's plans gave her exactly what she wanted. Whenever someone believed a lie or doubted a truth, she became that much more powerful. We might think we know what we're doing here, but in many ways, I doubt we do. There will be ripples from Eris' actions, we can't predict what waves she'll make. Akura knows that Savathun's plan isn't simply defeat Zivu Arath, but something more. Akura mentions the word Imbaru, which was introduced back in Forsaken in the Truth to Power law book. This is when Savathun creates a new tribute system using deception rather than killing, and she names it Imbaru. So Savathun creates Imbaru, which is her own tribute system that is fed by her cunning. This is why Akura says that even asking the question pays her tribute, because to ask means you don't understand, which means she has deceived you. Of course, now it has been revealed that the Spire contains the Imbaru engine, which seems to be still producing tribute every time someone is fooled. We just don't understand how this is all linked together yet. Where is this energy going now that Savathun is separated from her worm? And even dead, we know that Eris needs to discover something that will help with defeating Zivu, but how will that relate to Imbaru, if at all? There are even other experiments happening in the Spire that we haven't spoken about yet in this video. For example, the worship of the sword logic with the Lucent Hive battling it out. Once again, very strange and hypocritical. The lore tab for the exotic Moth Keeper's Wraps also speaks about how an incantation was stolen from the Spire to control the Light Moths. We have light experiments, dark experiments, tribute systems, moth incantations. There's a lot going on in the Spire. On top of all that, we know that Savathun planned this season. We know Savathun planned for Eris to adopt a high form, and wouldn't you know, the only place that Eris can transform is in the Athenaeum and the Oubliette. This is confirmed in the Locus Locutus Sniper Rifle Lore tab. It reads, Yes, Ido said, then paused. When she spoke again, it was in a whisper. This is where it happens, your transformations? Her voice strained at the last word. Yes where the runes are most powerful, Eris answered coolly, here and in the Witch Queen's oubliette. Ido nodded. This is what is exciting about this season. Even from the grave, it feels like Savathun is toying with us, like we have all the information in front of us, but we just don't know how to use it yet. And even if we do use it, will it benefit us? Or will it just benefit Savathun? Or will it be mutually beneficial? And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can have the word Imbaru. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.